Yeah. We've got them on today. How are you doing? So far, so good. Thank you. Thank you for making time to speak to us. It's okay. Okay, we right, everyone? Can we just clear the background? I'm telling you. If you want to have good advice, never pay any attention to the camera guys because <laughs> they would tell you over and over something is wrong and let's reshoot it, let's do this and let's do that. Hey, just do it. Are you listening to this, guys? <laughs> okay, let's call it. Action. Action. Arnold Schwarzenegger, lovely to meet you. Thank you. Did returning to Terminator feel like slipping back into a comfortable pair of shoes? Well, it was um, kind of like riding a bicycle, you know, that you never really lose it. Uh, even though I have, uh, the last one was done in 2002, came out 2003, so uh, it's 12 years now, and uh, I'm back again. Load up. What's the experience like of making a film and then watching it back with the full array of special effects, especially a film like this that has very accomplished special effects? Well, I think that when you film, you really are not aware of any of that. It is sometimes challenging when you film and you only see a green background. And then you have to kind of imagine that this is inside uh, some huge factory or this is uh, the future world and the, uh, all of those things. So that will be then put in later on when you're not there. And uh, what is really surprising is then when you watch it, because I was not there when a lot of this stuff was done visual effects wise. And all of a sudden, is to see the, the, the size of the movie and to see it then with the music and to see it all when it's totally finished. Like, I've just watched it literally a few days ago before I went to Brazil and then came over here to Australia. I was blown away by it. Did you have any sense when you made the original Terminator that it was something special and it was going to become such an iconic film? No, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I was concerned when we did the first Terminator there was another movie that came out just beforehand. It was called The Exterminator. And it was one of those B movies. But then when the movie came out, we were also surprised that this action movie always said was one of the top 10 movies for Time Magazine and that it got so much, so many great reviews and all this. And it made more money than we expected it to make because it was really only a small six and a half million dollar production. And then it made all this money. Could you ever have imagined, you know, from your childhood in Austria, then your bodybuilding career, your film career at the highest levels, your political career at the highest levels, could you ever have imagined in your wildest dreams that you would have such a diverse and interesting career? No, but I mean, I, I, I tell you that I never thought that I would be able to do all of those things to the extent that I did it. I would say that I always was uh, very motivated I also always had big visions. I mean, I'm very serious about my visions. I see them very clearly, unlike most people, I really see them clearly. And therefore I see that you can't go after them if you work hard and if you know how to get there. Uh, that's number two. Number three, I think it is because America. America is, it's always known to be the land of opportunity, but I have experienced it firsthand. It's not just a slogan or a saying. It is really the land of opportunity because only in America you can do something like that. The increasingly partisan nature of politics in Washington has caused lots of commentators to wonder, you know, is politics broken? Um, is the two-party system broken? What do you think about that? I think that uh, we have gone through those periods in the past in America and worldwide uh, where people are very intense and they argue about the, you know, their beliefs. Um, and uh, sometimes there is a time where people forget, where politicians forget that their ultimate responsibility is to be a public servant and not a party servant. And the worst thing that can happen is, is if they think they have to serve their party and the special interests rather than the people. Speaking of politics, the Australian finance minister is a guy named Matthias Cormann and he has a Belgian accent and some people think that he sounds a bit like you and he has been shamelessly ripping off some of your best lines. Let me show you. Herb Shorten uh, is an economic girly man. Uh, I'll be back uh, with uh, the treasurer at 2pm. How do you rate this guy? 
Well, it's always, uh, I think, a, uh, a compliment when someone uh, <laughs> uses your lines or when someone is imitating your accent. <laughs> it has been uh, not only here in Australia, but I mean, you can imagine in America, if it is amongst the comedians, if it is amongst the politicians. Have you got some other classic Schwarzenegger lines you can bequeath to him to use? <laughs> I have uh, too many other things to, to, to worry about than to, to feed him lines. <laughs> they used to say to me, it says, your accent is going to bury you. I mean, you're never going to get in the movie business. You're never going to go and be a leading man because you have this accent. And in America, people want to have uh, actors sound like John Wayne or like Clint Eastwood, uh, but not like uh, some Nazi officer from Germany or something like that. And, uh, you know, after I pro have proven that with hard work, and with a positive attitude and having faith in yourself, you don't listen to the naysayers and you go and break through that and now it has become the biggest asset. You've had a lot of fun too, haven't you, with your career and getting to do some comedy and, and whatnot and you know, not sort of take yourself too seriously. I never took myself too seriously. Uh, what I did take seriously uh, and, and, and very serious was the issues that I tackle. Uh, you know, that if you talk about promotion of health and fitness, and you, um, you know, become the chairman of the President's Council on Fitness and you go through all 50 states and you go into the schools and you promote the idea of hiring more physical education teachers. Or if you go out and try to get an extra $500 million for after school programs. Or if you go out and try to convince the people to get off fossil fuels uh, and to go and, and deal more with renewable energy. Uh, since this is, we have an abundant amount of that. So those issues I take very seriously. And, but I don't take myself that seriously because I'm, uh, to me, life is all about, you know, hard work. And my father always said to me, be useful. To be useful, it's very important. To do something that is uh, you know, bigger than you are, causes that are bigger than you are, but have a good time at the same time. Smile, have a good time, have a positive attitude and see always uh, everything, uh, the half, the glass is half full rather than half empty. Well, it's been very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely, thank you.